Uh, now, the Prime Minister has announced new policies on disposable vapes today, banning them to help protect children's health after an alarming rise in youth vaping. New powers will be brought in to restrict vape flavours and introduce plain packaging and also change how they're displayed in stores. This morning, the Health Secretary said children vaping is a gateway habit into smoking. Well, earlier we spoke to Ewan Fisher, who almost died from his vape addiction. I was vaping for a little bit, not too long actually, before I ended up in my coma and nearly lost my life. Uh, so I started having like chest infections, well, what I thought were chest infections. Um, and my mum did tell me to stop vaping and I didn't really listen to her because I was a teenager. I thought I knew best. And yeah, if, I wish I had listened because it's ruined my whole life really. Well, joining us to discuss this and all the other political stories today, columnist at The Sun, Ron Liddell. Ron, a very good morning to you. Um, some Conservatives you, say this is distinctly unconservative. Is it? Yes, it is. Uh, and that's good, uh, I think. Uh, and there, are, there are people in the Conservative Party like Liz Truss who don't understand that the state uh, does have a duty and a responsibility to, to look after the, to the population to a degree without, be, without it being a nanny state. Uh, and banning vapes seems to me a perfectly reasonable thing to do with a couple of provisos, I, I, I worry a little bit about those people who have successfully uh, got themselves off smoking uh, cigarettes uh, and they're using vapes uh, as a means to to reduce their intake of nicotine in a in a more kind of user friendly way. Um, I mean, I fall into that category. I don't actually vape, but I do use a couple of products which could similarly be banned, you know, uh, and that they've helped me stop smoking. I was on 60 a day. But I, I, it, it isn't a conservative uh, uh, thing to do. Uh, I mean, in a way, Liz Truss is quite right and all those people are quite right. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. And I think in this case, it probably is, it probably is right. I guess the problem is with enforcement, isn't it? Once you've banned these products and stopped kids getting hold of it, because I don't think anyone's talking about stopping adults getting hold of vapes, so they'll still be available to people who want to come off smoking. But then you've got the issue of how kids may want to go and get their hands on vapes through other means, and, and then what sort of products they're actually going to be using. So as well as the ban, you then have to exercise some level of enforcement, and there doesn't seem to be much detail about that at all today, anyway, at least. Well, we haven't heard yet, have we? I mean, we've got to listen to Sunak this afternoon. He may well make a pig's ear of it all. Uh, I mean, that wouldn't hugely surprise any of us, I don't suppose. Uh, but I don't think that that's a, that's a reason not to do it. I mean, you know, I, I was infuriated back in 2007 when, uh, because I, when the first bans on smoking came into effect, which was, you know, the bans on smoking in pubs, for example, and, and stuff like that. that, that enraged me. But you know, I, I don't think I'd go back to it now. Um, uh, not simply because I've given up, but because it's quite clearly a benefit to the health of so many people in the country. And there are other things which the Conservative Party or the Labour Party could do. The only party uh, advocating at the moment is the uh, Social Democrats, which is uh, something else which is incredibly injurious to children, but I suspect governments will never get around to doing, which is limiting smartphone use for people under the age of 16, and particularly, obviously, in schools. These are all things which a government can get involved with without it being a nanny state and which will make us a better nation in the end. Well, Miriam Cates was suggesting exactly that, wasn't she? Um... Well, Miriam's, Miriam's absolutely brilliant. I mean, she's a, she's an absolutely brilliant MP. She's not a Tory. Uh, I don't know why she's still in them, but uh, she is a, she, she's a wonderful MP. And she, she's absolutely right about that. I mean, the, all, all of the figures are there, the, the damage which it causes to, uh, to the attention spans of children under the age of 16 is massive. Uh, and, you know, we could do something about that. But there's always resistance. There's always this shout that it's a nanny state. But the state does have to act. You know, uh, I, I'm, I've never been opposed to the state intervening when something very important needs doing. And uh, I think that's the flaw with the right wing of the Conservative Party. Where? Are you? Sorry. No, well, I just want to you. give you. A, I just you. want to give you a quote, actually, Rob, because one uh, Conservative MP said, "I'm sure banning vapes goes down brilliantly among the Californian fasting community." I wonder who he's talking about there. Uh, but our voters want the boat stopping and their wage packets growing. The boat stopping comes into the political sort of headlights again today as it goes to the Lords, and it looks like there's going to be, at the very least, some delaying tactics from the Lords. Are they just doing their job? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so, sorry, I, I don't know now whether we're talking about vapes or Rwanda. Stopping the boats, <laughs> Rwanda. <laughs> We've got to this, back the, the second boat. reading uh, yes. of the Rwanda is a safe third country bill in the House of Lords. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it is an interminable process. I, I, I My guess, you know, uh, is that there will not be a single person transferred to Rwanda this year, you know, uh, and if there is, he'll probably be Rwandan. Uh, I, I just, it, it, it is... It is ineluctable uh, because there are so many things ranged against the government on this issue. The first and most obvious is um, is the fact that all the lawyers and the House of Lords are against the government doing anything whatsoever uh, to reduce the number of people coming over here uh, as migrants. Uh, I, I don't think all the lawyers, Rob. We had a lawyer in the studio earlier in this programme who said that we need to stop the boats, but it's it's a question of how you then go about it and whether or not Rwanda is, is, is the safest oh, place he, to send he, people. He said that, did he? <laughs> right, OK. I, I'm sorry, I have yet to hear anything from a lawyer which has suggested how we might do that. Uh, I mean, we've got a real problem here, which is partly a, a, a bigger issue that we're becoming a kind of juristocracy uh, instead of a democracy, which is that it, government policy is in the end thwarted at every stage by the law courts. Uh, and it's also, of course, thwarted by the House of Lords. Uh, I, I would be happier about it being stopped if I heard something from Sir Keir Starmer, for example, which suggested how he might do it, rather than just making fatuous comments about how he's going to clamp down on the traffickers. How are you going to do that, Keir? You know, how are you going to do it? We don't know. He hasn't told us. Um, and so I think it's it's very, very difficult for, for the government. Uh, on this issue, and Rwanda, I think they probably nailed their, their colours to a, a fairly dodgy mask with Rwanda, but it is one answer, and there, and yet it will be thwarted at every single possible opportunity by those who seemingly don't want to stop the boats coming at all. Rod, thank you so much. As Pleasure. ever, we Pleasure. always appreciate your time and your analysis.